In this video, we're going to be talking about anti-roll bars, also known as sway bars. Incorrectly set up, anti-roll bars can ruin your car's handling, so it's imperative that you have them set up correctly. In this video, we're going to be explaining what an anti-roll bar is, what it does, and more importantly, how you can get it set up to get your car handling even better. So an anti-roll bar effectively helps to control body roll through a corner. If we didn't have an anti-roll bar fitted, the car could be extremely soft through a corner, allowing the body to physically roll over and tilt through the corner excessively. This can lift up inside wheels and it can really over compress outside wheels and lead to a huge amount of instability. So an anti-roll bar effectively allows us to transfer the weight back to the inside axle to keep the car much flatter through the corner. So if that's the case, then why can't we just fit a really stiff anti-roll bar? Well, the reason for that is if we go too stiff on the anti-roll bar, then we're also gonna be transferring load across the axle and we're gonna to lead to a situation where we've overloaded a tire and unloaded a tire and lost grip across the axle as well. So there is a balance to find, which is really important to find the balance and then you can tune it to get your car handling exactly as you want it to. Something we're gonna go through very shortly on the whiteboard in a bit more detail. So anti-roll bars are effectively springs and they work in parallel with the coil springs that are with the dampers usually to give a stiffness through the corner. So these are really only activated when the car is going through the corner. Now there's a few ways to make these stiffer. So one is to have a thicker anti-roll bar. So this is off the front axle of an FAX BMW M car and it's thicker than standard. So by fitting this, you're stiffening the anti-roll bar on the car. Another way, such as on our GT4 here, you have different mounting holes for the end link or drop link to connect to. And where you mount these on the roll bar determines how stiff or soft that is. There's other styles such as blade anti-roll bars that were featured on the GC2 RS Club Sport that we did a video on last year. And these can be adjusted by alternating the angle of the blade to change the stiffness of that cantilever and therefore of the anti-roll bar. So there's quite a few different ways that you can get stiffer or softer anti-roll bars, but to change them on the fly and make a really quick adjustment to get them stiffer or softer, having the holes such as our GT4 or the blades like the GT2 RS Club Sport is a really nice, easy way to make adjustments quickly to change the balance of the car front to rear. So we're gonna head over to the whiteboard now and just run through some scenarios to show you exactly how you can do that. So we're gonna talk now about how we tune an anti-roll bar as it's going through the corner to change the understeer or oversteer characteristics. However, before we get into that on the whiteboard, there are two whole scenarios when it comes to tuning roll bars, one of which is at the opposite end of the scale, which is effectively like a Range Rover, which is extremely soft and it sort of wallows around excessively or a van, for example. So in those scenarios, putting stiffer anti-roll bars on the car will help with the handling characteristics. However, in this case, we're gonna be talking about cars that are already set up to an extent, such as the GT4 or a BMW M car or a Golf GTI or something like that, where we already have roll bars that are working well. It has a relatively flat chassis through the corner. It's not excessively wallowing over, touching the wing mirrors down to the ground through the corner. We already have a good platform to work from. So that is the scenario we're gonna discuss. So you're tuning the car for track and race behavior effectively using these techniques. So we're just explaining that because there's quite a lot of confusion around anti-roll bars because of that. Because in some cases, stiffer anti-roll bars will fix an issue, but in this case, going stiffer could make that issue worse. So we're only gonna focus in on the sports cars, really, so we can tune that behavior using these techniques. So anti-roll bars work by working in parallel with the coil spring. So an anti-roll bar is effectively just a spring and that is being sprung as the car is going through the corner. So as we're on heavy braking zones, on acceleration, or just generally in a straight line and both wheels hit a compression, the roll bar isn't working. That's where the coil springs are giving you the spring rate of the car. But as soon as one of the wheels goes into compression and one goes into droop, the anti-roll bar has been physically twisted across the axle and is effectively working in conjunction with the coil spring to give extra spring stiffness to the car. This means that we can have a more compliant car for general road use, driving along, hitting bumps and just going down the road. But when we get to the corner, we can have the behavior of a much stiffer car. So this is why an anti-roll bar is a really nice feature on a car because you get two really nice worlds where you get a comfy car on braking and acceleration that can move around because the springs aren't excessively stiff. But then through the corner, we get a much stiffer car as the anti-roll bars are effectively activated. When it comes to actually physically tuning an anti-roll bar, we need to have a look at where in the corner we're having an issue. So we have corner entry, mid corner, and corner exit. An anti-roll bar is at its most effective when tuning it 
at the mid corner section. This is because as a car goes into a corner and out of a corner, it's physically rolling from one side to the other. During this process, the dampers are going through their range of motion and therefore the dampers can be tuned to tune how a car comes in on corner entry and corner exit. We do actually have a video from a while ago that we posted covering this to some extent where you can tune your dampers to control corner entry and exit behavior. However, in the middle of a corner, your dampers have stopped compressing because the car has reached the point near the apex where it's settled and it's no longer compressing or, or drooping a corner using those dampers. So at that point in particular, your anti-roll bar is extremely effective at controlling the behavior of that car. So if you've got mid corner, apex, understeer or oversteer, this is where tuning your roll bars comes in extremely handy. So we've now identified where an anti-roll bar is at its most effective, and that's exactly at the middle of the corner, so the apex section or mid corner effectively. So that's where we're gonna be focusing on fixing an understeer or oversteer characteristic of the car. We've also confirmed that we're gonna be talking about a sports car or something similar that's already stiff enough, so it doesn't have excessive body roll going through the corner already. We're just looking to fine tune the distribution of grip front to rear. So in that scenario, these tips are now going to apply to a front wheel drive car, a four wheel drive car, or a rear wheel drive car. It doesn't matter which one of those you have, this will still work to fix the oversteer and understeer characteristics at the apex of the corner. So understeer first is where you turn into the corner and call it a right hander here. It's where you turn the steering wheels and the front of the car pushes on straight forward instead of actually going around the corner. This is understeer. So in that scenario, we can do two things. We can either soften the front anti-roll bar or stiffen the rear anti-roll bar. So if you take a look at the cantilever here, this is the end of an anti-roll bar with three selectable holes, just like on our GT4. If we move the drop link from the middle position here to the outer position, we're softening the roll bar. If we move it from the middle position to the most inner position nearest to the actual bar itself, we're going to stiffen the anti-roll bar. So this is really important to understand that the further away, the longer you're effectively making that anti-roll bar, it's going to become softer. And the shorter you're effectively making that anti-roll bar, you're gonna make it stiffer. And we do this by moving our drop link or sway bar end link position on that roll bar in particular. So on our GT4, it comes out the factory with them bolted directly in the middle. This means that if you want to soften an axle, we can move it outboard to the end of the anti-roll bar. And if you want to stiffen an axle, we can move it inboard towards the actual bar of the anti-roll bar. And that's how we're gonna tune it. So if our GT4 was understeering around this corner, we could either soften the front anti-roll bar off a hole, or we can stiffen up the rear anti-roll bar, which is gonna help shift that characteristic backwards and reduce the understeer. The way to decide which one to do, so do we either soften the front or stiffen the rear to fix the understeer, is basically how that car feels right now. So in a scenario where both axles are in the middle and the car doesn't feel excessively stiff, we would usually stiffen the rear roll bar to fix the understeer issue. However, if you're in a position where the rear roll bar is already at full stiff and it's still understeering, then you would look to move the front anti roll bar to full soft. So that's the two ways of approaching this. So now we'll look at a condition where the car is actually oversteering through the corner. So we'll get rid of these and oversteer is where we're turning right hand again through this corner and the back of the car tries coming around and goes out towards the outside of the track. So that's where the car starts to rotate on us. That's oversteer, where the back of the car is coming around from the front and oversteering instead of just driving around the corner. In this scenario, again, applies to front wheel drive, all wheel drive and rear wheel drive we can do two things again with our front and our rear anti-roll bar. To fix oversteer, we can either soften the rear roll bar or stiffen the front roll bar. So by stiffening the front roll bar, we're shifting that balance again and we're introducing a bit of understeer to give grip back to the rear. And by softening the anti-roll bar again, we're giving more movement and we're allowing a bit more grip into the rear axle. So again, to go full soft, we're gonna move it to the end of the anti-roll bar and to go full stiff, we're gonna move it all the way in to where the body of the bar is, and that's full stiff. So you can do either or. And again, as with the understeer, the same conditions apply, where if the car feels already overly stiff, then we look to soften the other axle. But if the car feels like it could take a bit more stiffness into it, then we'd stiffen the axle up. So that's the way we're gonna approach this adjustment. So when we're actually explaining this to people, 
it's sometimes contrary to what a lot of people actually believe is the solution to fixing understeer or oversteer. So a lot of people come into this thinking that if my car's understeering, I'll stiffen the front anti-roll bar and that will fix the understeer, but it's not actually the case. So just to explain a little bit of the theory as to why that's not the case, we've drawn a, a simplified diagram here, which is this, this plain and simple graph, which has on this axis here, the grip level going through the tire. So that's how much grip the tire is physically generating. And then down the bottom here, we've got normal force being applied through that tire. So think of that as the actual weight being pushed down on the tire, pushing that tire into the ground to generate more grip effectively, which is basically the mass of the car. That's how we can think of it just to keep it nice and simple. So going down the straight at a constant velocity, we have 25% levels of grip at all four corners. It's shared evenly across all of those tires just to keep the numbers nice and simple. As we then go into that corner, we're gonna be transferring some of that, that load effectively from the inside axle over to the outside axle as the car is going around the corner. And that's because we've got that, the force applying about the center of gravity of the car, pushing it towards the outside of the corner. Then the tires are then opposing that force, generating grip inwards to keep it on the actual tarmac itself and to get the car around that corner. So that is where lateral load transfer is occurring. So that is where the, the lateral load of the car is shifting load from the inside to the outside wheels, and that's lateral load transfer. So what's really important here is the stiffer that we make an anti-roll bar, the more lateral load transfer occurs across the axle. So on this graph here, we can assume that just going in a straight line, 25% grip levels, we can draw a little line up here, and that's generating this much grip. Here. So we're generating a nice amount of grip from that tire on all four corners, and that's all added together to generate an overall amount of grip. If we really stiffen that anti-roll bar and get a lot of lateral load transfer occurring, we can end up in a, an extreme scenario where we're actually picking up the inside wheel fully off the ground, and we're shifting all of the axle load over to the outside tire. In that scenario, we'll have no grip on the inside tire down here, because we've got rid of all that normal force, so we've got no grip. And then on the other wheel, we've got all the normal force applied to it from the car. So we've actually really dropped off because all tires have a graph where they can take so much force and then they start to fall off a cliff in terms of grip and they can't take it and you're overwhelming the compound and then it's slipping anyway. So in that scenario, overall, we actually have a lot less grip than if we just doubled this number here. If we just shared it evenly, we'd have this much grip. Now we only have this much grip going for the corner. So this is why we can start to tune the oversteer and the understeer. So if we stiffen a roll bar, it starts to take grip away from the axle past a certain point. And that's why it's so important to tune them so specifically so you don't end up falling outside of the operational window, which is effectively in this bit here. So if we soften a rear roll bar to fix oversteer, what we're doing there is we're giving the grip back to both wheels at the rear axle, when added together, give us an overall higher amount of grip at the axle, which will reduce our oversteer if it's at the back. So this is basically the really simple maths behind why an anti-roll bar gives or takes away grip from the overall axle. So that's everything you need to know about anti-roll bars. We have a similar video about tuning shock absorbers as well. So after this video, you can go over to our channel and check out that one. So then you have a full understanding of tuning a car at the corner entry, mid corner and corner exit stages using the dampers and the anti-roll bars. We have lots more videos coming like this as well in the future. Some informative videos on different aspects of suspension setup. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those.